What's up, softball players? Dan Blewett here. I'm joined by Coach Andrew Sachs, owner of Prime Sports Performance here in Baltimore, Maryland. He works with tons of softball players, baseball players, amateur college professional. So today we're going to talk about in-season training, some do's and don'ts, uh, kind of from both of us, because obviously we both do this for a living. So today we're going to give you some of our best tips, things to avoid, things to definitely include in your regimen so that you can have a productive in-season, because there's definitely ways that you can make yourself more fatigued, just make it harder on yourself, or do the wrong things and end up injured potentially. So we'll help you avoid those today. Remember, if you're new to the channel, definitely hit the subscribe button. There's links to more things in the description of the video below. So if you want more resources from me, if you want to follow Coach Sachs, you can do all that in the video description links below. And then again, remember, we put out new videos each week, so subscribe and you'll be notified as soon as they release. All right, so Coach, what's the first thing you got for us? So I think the first thing you want to focus on when it comes to in-season training is uh, maintaining your strength levels. Usually that's going to be the first thing that goes during the season, especially if you're not following a lifting program. Uh, typically with my baseball and softball players, I recommend that they do probably like two, maybe three lifts a week, focusing on big compound movements. So that's things like squats, deadlifts, lunges, things like that. Keeping the volume relatively low, so maybe three sets of like three to six uh, reps. Uh, not doing anything for high reps, like 8 to 10, is probably a little bit too much. That's going to take a long time to recover from. Uh, typically, I try to have my players do things where it's, it's going to be challenging for them enough to have a, like a strength stimulus, but it's not going to be enough to like, tear them down. So usually, if we're doing a set of three, like for example, on a deadlift, I'll tell them to kind of pick a weight where they can do the three reps, and it's hard, but they still have one to two reps left in the tank once they're done their set. Yeah, it's really easy, especially for athletes who work hard, to feel when they get to in season that they have to continue to do the exact same volume, where you can really get run down. Now you're running down the bases slower, you're throwing slower, you're hitting slower. Uh, it doesn't make you lazy to do things the right way in season, but you definitely need to scale back a little bit while still doing heavier weights where you can maintain your strength. So Absolutely. you might at first be like, oh, I only did five reps and it wasn't super hard. I'm not exhausted leaving the gym. That's normal for in-season training. So don't forget that. It's actually preferable for in-season training. You yeah. don't want to feel bad when you leave the gym. You want to feel good typically. Yeah, it should build you back up and help you recover and keep your strength that you worked so hard to build all off season without fatiguing you and, and ruining for you for your game. All right, what do you got next? Uh, one thing I try to avoid, and this, is, this goes for baseball and softball players, um, is doing a lot of long distance running, and especially if it's going to be kind of like intermediate level uh, intensity. Uh, softball is a sport where we're not doing a lot of long distance slow movements. We're doing like short explosive movements followed by a relatively long recovery time. So if, if you're a pitcher, you throw a pitch, that's one explosive movement, followed by about 10, 12, 15 seconds of recovery. So if we're doing sprints, it's usually best to try to mimic what we do, uh, what, the energy that we use in a game situation. Now that said, if you don't have a very good aerobic base, you can probably benefit from doing a little bit of long distance running to improve your recovery. Um, but you don't want to do so at the expense of strength and power, which if you do too much long distance running, it can have a negative effect on strength and power. So your, your pitching velocity could drop, uh, your batting uh, power could take a hit, your running speed. It's all about kind of finding that balance between what's going to keep you healthy and help you recover versus what's going to be too much and what can actually have a negative effect on you. Yeah, so to piggyback on that thought, another thing that's really popular is doing this group conditioning where you might do you know, a bunch of jumping jacks in a row, then like 30 body weight squats yeah. or a bunch of split squat jumps. That stuff, I mean, you can feel it like way down your legs, but that stuff has its place usually in the off season. But if you're doing team conditioning like that, or, or maybe you're trying to really get in shape and, and do some of this crazy conditioning, it can really make you slower during the season. So be careful with stuff like that as well. So distance running definitely can have the wrong effect. I think anything, you know, in like a little bit of moderation is okay. But as you said, more sprinting is definitely the way to go. Um, what, what else you got? Uh, I think a big thing uh, to avoid, especially for pitchers, is going to be like heavy forearm training in season. Uh, I know that softball pitching people tend to get a little bit more aggressive with, with pitch counts and they don't worry so much about rest as they will with, with baseball pitchers. Uh, but if you're doing a lot of forearm exercises in season, that can actually put a lot of stress on your forearm muscles. And if you're pitching under a fatigued state, that's going to have a pretty big negative effect on your fastball velocity. 
And same with if you're throwing overhand, if you're a position player, you don't want to be throwing with fatigued forearms. You probably don't want to be hitting with fatigued forearms either because you won't be able to put as much velocity into your swing as you would otherwise. So typically, we'll try to avoid doing a lot of forearm work during the in-season program. Uh, we'll maybe do one day a week where we'll throw in some, like, some wrist extensions or curls or deviations or rotations. We're always going to do those on days where they're not immediately followed by a game, so we don't have to pitch or play with our forearms in a fatigued state. Okay, yeah, and I know for me, even on the baseball side, I felt that my velocity would drop as a pitcher if I did too much rehab even for my forearms between starts, so definitely good advice there. Um, what do you think about explosive exercises? Should be, we be doing tons of plyometrics during the season? I know they're really like a hot topic, but are plyos good during the season or not? Um, I, I, I think it kind of depends on what your role is on the team. I think if you're a starter, especially, um, you really don't need to be working on explosiveness during the season, and you're already getting so many swings and throws and sprints at practice and games that I don't think, like, I mean, you could take, what, 200 swings in a, in a, in a practice, yeah, right? Easily. So if you're doing three sets of six, like, medicine ball throws, in addition to your 200 swings you just took, I don't know if that's going to make an appreciable difference for you. Um, so yeah. typically, and, and there's always going to be uh, time constraints with training in season. You don't have a lot of time to get done what you need to get done. So the plyometrics, the med ball throws, that's usually stuff that I'll take out in order to prioritize uh, strength training during that time period. Because again, you're getting a lot of throws, a lot of swings, and those are plyometric exercises themselves if you really think about it that way. Um, so you really don't need to be adding any more to what you're already doing, typically. Yeah, I think it's, it's really common. Everyone wants to get faster and jump higher and, and increase their lateral quickness and all that stuff, which is really important for softball. But at the same time, just like if, if you're a basketball player, would you just spend all your training time doing more jumping if you want to jump higher? No, you would do stuff that you don't do in the game. Swinging and, and sprinting in the hole for a ground ball as a shortstop you know, going after a bunt and making a throw on a stick, those are all explosive, fast, agile, quick, basically plyometric movements, like he said, that you're getting in the game. So remember that your game counts in this whole grand scheme of all the training and just exercise that you do. Your sport counts as exercise. So you need to do things that you're not getting on the field, like the heavier barbell work, the heavier strength training. Because if you don't get that, if you only do speed and agility in your, in your training, and then you're only doing essentially speed and agility on the field, you're never getting that heavy strength training, and now all the work you put in the off season goes down the drain. Yeah. All right, one more. What do you got? What do we got? One more thing to avoid. Um, let's see. I guess the obvious thing to avoid is is not training at all. Uh, I mean, this is pretty well worn territory by this point. I feel like everybody should know this, but yeah, but I feel like they need to hear it again. They too. probably should. Um, in season training should always be be a priority. Um, and I can speak from personal experience. When I was in high school, I would train really hard throughout the entire off season. I would get bigger, I would get stronger, I would be faster, but then I would stop lifting during the season because I was afraid of making myself too tired or I didn't have enough time or whatever other excuse you could make for yourself. And by the end of the year, I would be weaker, I would be slower, I would throw would not as fast. Um, and I see with athletes that I train now, the kids that continue to train throughout the entire season, they come back and they're ready to kind of hit the ground running and they can keep gaining uh, and they can yeah, that's what I'm looking for. Yeah, you, you they, want to keep making progress. Exactly. You don't want to go, I worked hard in the offseason, then I lost it. Yeah. Then I worked hard, then I lost it. You want to continue, I worked hard, then I kind of plateaued because it's the season, but then I worked hard again. And you just keep yeah. making more progress instead of having to dig yourself out of a hole yeah. that you make for yourself every in-season. Yeah, and I think athletes that really want to play in college and beyond, you'll see they'll have that kind of continuous improvement. Athletes that aren't, like, maybe super into playing at the next level. You see them train for one season, then stop, and then train for a season and stop. But if you want to be one of those athletes that plays at college and beyond possibly, you have to kind of keep training to make sure you're at your best possible level when you finish high school and then when you finish, finish college, rather than having to start everything over again every single off season. Yeah, so final thought to wrap up with is if you're not training, someone else is. It's mm -hmm. not to say you should be going seven days a week because you shouldn't. There's always a time to do more, do less, throttle up, throttle down, and change what you're doing and working smarter rather than working harder. But if you're not training at all in season, there's a girl who is, and she might be vying for that same spot on some team. Mm -hmm. So just remember, there's always someone out there who's putting in more work than you are, and that shouldn't make you frustrated and, and, and drive you insane because you can definitely drive yourself. There's always someone better than you doing something else that you're not. But 
remember, just be motivated by the fact that all of us in the United States are vying for the same college scholarship spots. So if you're not putting in the work, someone else is. All right, thank you, Absolutely. Coach Sachs, for the, the good tips. Thank you for having me. I'll put his, uh, if you want to follow him on Instagram, social media, Twitter, uh, well, I'll put his links in the description below. Definitely follow the, and subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you here next week.